Well, let's bring in my fantastic panel. Joining me here in the Sky News Centre, journalist and political commentator James McPherson from The Spectator Australia, lawyer and former Liberal candidate Catherine Deves, the woman who should be the member for Warringah, despite what the Sydney Morning Herald thinks. We'll discuss that as well. And, of course, the brilliant geologist Ian Plymer, who you can also read in The Spectator Australia. Now, um, let's get started. On all this fanfare surrounding Albo in Bali and all this praise he's lapping on for resetting the leadership with Beijing, um, Ian Plymer, why are we rewarding him for bending the knee to China? And I also want to ask you, Ian, about this idea of reparations, which Chris Bowen, in my opinion, has betrayed the Australian people. There was no mandate for this stuff. Uh, it was never mentioned in the election. Chris Bowen, our climate change minister, by the way, one of the worst ministers we've ever had in the history of Australian politics under Kevin Rudd and under so on. But anyway, he's toddled off there, Ian, and he's told the world that Australia should be paying reparations for all the bad things we've done. Uh, billions of dollars we're talking about. I call this treasonous and I call it theft. What do you call it, Ian Plymer? Well, I use exactly the same words. However, we should remember that... In eastern Australia, we have massive flooding. Where is Albo? Where is our Prime Minister helping people and comforting people? No, he's in Bali. And if you look at the 52-item accord that was put out from Bali, um, there are some scary things there. One of them is $100 billion that Bali wants wealthy countries to pay. Now, that $100 billion could be used to help the infrastructure of these flood-damaged areas in New South Wales and Victoria. Where is our climate change minister when apparently this climate change damage is due to we sinners? Where is he? Where is he helping? No, he's giving away the assets of Australia. We have the Treasurer of New South Wales putting Hunter Valley people out of work. This is appalling. We have ministers who are getting on their knees, flagellating themselves and trying to give away as much of Australia as possible to unelected foreign interests. This is treason. Well, there you go. We're on the same ticket there. Catherine Dees, what do you make of this? So, a couple of things. What did you make of, uh, basically, is this a good thing, how Albo's kind of got China talking to us? <clears throat> or is he kowtowing to China, which is one of the criticisms? And also, what did you make of this idea of reparations from Australia to whoever? Well, the idea of reparations, this is redistribution of wealth from middle-class Australians to, uh, as you pointed out, um, other nations, other sovereign nations, and it will impoverish us. Why should we impoverish ourselves in furtherance of some sort of crazy climate agenda? And then in regards to Albo, well, it does look like he's kowtowing. Um, he's bending over backwards with respect to business, but there's been no mention of national security. I mean, let's look at China's expansionist aims, how they're uh, increasing their military presence uh, in our part of the world, and none of that's being mentioned. James McPherson. You know, uh, the talk of giving reparations to countries that have suffered damage from the Industrial Revolution, I'm in favour of that, provided we first issue an invoice yep, for absolutely. all the benefits that absolutely. the Industrial Revolution 100%. has created. Why is this a one-way street where we only talk about some of the possible harms that have been done. What about the inordinate good, the, the millions upon millions of people lifted out of poverty? Where's the thanks and the gratitude or where, where's the money that uh, we receive for that? Well, that perhaps Chris start. Bowen could go around with a bucket, putting it out and saying, by the way, can you please thank us for all the good things we've done, particularly around the Pacific? Uh, now, talking about this as well, so out of Bali we get uh, this kind of um, oh, this statement. They all sign this big mm. thing, the declaration that's out of Bali. Now, I went, read through this, and most of it's, uh, you know, all the UN-type waffle and all the rest of it, but in paragraph 23, here's a little bit that I uh, will read you. And uh, we have signed up to this, apparently. Uh, again, no mention of it in the election that we had a few months ago, and I quote... We have signed up to this Australia. We support continued international dialogue and collaboration on the establishment of trusted global digital health networks that should capitalise and build on the success of the existing standards and digital COVID-19 certificates. Ian Plymer, it appears that we've now signed up uh, under the uh, Chris Bowen Albo kind of regime to uh, 
digital passports for COVID going into the future. Let's sign up and everybody join the, join the jump on the train, Ian Plymer. Well, in that document of 52 points, they stress this digital One Health idea. Now, One Health sounds very, very Orwellian. Why do we have to sign it anyway? The hackers have got all the information and releasing it <laughs> to the world. We don't need to sign anything like this. So we, we are being taken for mugs. Here we have in Egypt signing away billions of dollars, yet we are already at net zero. We should be demanding that other countries pay us. We should de be demanding in Bali that we are very, very good international citizens and we are not going to sign what is a socialist manifesto. Read the document. Every one of the key issues of socialism is in that 52-item document. It is scary. James McPherson. So here we go. We've got digital passports, which we've just kind of crawled our way through. I've been talking before all week about those different companies, supposedly, you know, great Australian icons who treated their employees so terribly, all in the name of digital passports, QR codes, mandatory vaccination. Mm. While all that's happening, you've got Albo and Co up with the Bali and the rest of the world signing us up to permanent digital COVID Passports. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember when we were asked about this. Exactly. Um, I, I can't believe that our leaders, who are supposed to be representing us, but they seem far more intent on doing the bidding of uh, global entities. There, there were three things that happened uh, this week. As you've already mentioned, the G20 committed themselves to a, a health passport, which is a digital identity by stealth. But the uh, B20, which is the business summit that immediately follows the, the government summit, they are talking about establishing a central banking uh, uh, currency. And uh, then Klaus Schwab, who opened the B20, talked about, don't worry about the famine. They should have shut it right energy. there. The moment Klaus Schwab rocked up, they should have just called it a day. Well, well he said, we've, we've, we've got to concentrate on a complete reordering and restructuring of society. And then he said, governments need to cooperate. You start to wonder, who's bidding are our politicians doing? I'm well, running well, out of conspiracy theories. They're doing Klaus Schwab's, Catherine. We saw uh, Klaus Schwab boasting about how he had penetrated the cabinets of many of the countries around the world, including he cited half. 50% of the mm. Canadian cabinet uh, are penetrated by Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum. Should we be worried about this? Am I overreacting to this? Uh, here we go signing another treaty. And your fine point is digital COVID passports on the never-never. Well, Forever. We just need to look up uh, the Young Leaders Summit for the WEF and see who's on there. And that would be Senator Bragg. Ah. Oh, my old friend said it about. So there you go. I think we should be worried. <laughs> we should be worried. Well, OK, you've opened the door. You've opened the door. Walk on through, Catherine Deves. So, so let's set the scene. A, uh, a horrible uh, article today in the uh, Sydney Morning Herald attacking you. And, of course, the Sydney Morning Herald, the good thing about the Sydney Morning Herald is if you read it, you know exactly the opposite of what to think because mm -hmm. this, this article claims that you, the Deves Factor, uh, torpedoed the Morrison uh, campaign at the last election. I would argue that it is complete opposite, mm. that they had you, they would have won the election if they'd let you speak, if they'd let you out, they hid you in a cave in a cellar somewhere in Mosman and they wouldn't let you come out and speak. John Howard, to his eternal credit, wandered around the Manly Corso with you, but the rest of them ignored you. You had grubs like Matt Keane out there attacking you. Uh, all of this piled on, yet the issue that you wanted the electorate to focus on, 83% mm. of the people mm. in Australia agree with. There is no other issue. And yet you were there, Catherine Deves, silenced, and yet the Sydney Morning Herald think that somehow that torpedoed the election. No, the fact that they silenced you torpedoed the Libs. Uh, I agree with you. If I had had the opportunity to prosecute that argument and take the heat out of the media firestorm, it might have been a different outcome. And, look, we were really up against it in Moringa. We uh, had very limited time. We had Easter in the middle. But I'm really proud of our result. And when I look at what happened at the electorates around me uh, who had a much bigger swing against them than Moringa, I think that had it not been me, if they'd maybe selected the other two gentlemen who probably would have struggled to have name recognition. Um, I think the swing against us would have been a lot bigger. 
so I think with respect to that issue, I mean, I was the Liberal candidate. I wanted to run on Liberal... Um, on, on the Liberal platform, but with respect to that issue, everyone agrees because it was just common sense. Mm, absolutely. Now, Ian Plymer, I want to ask you about uh, France. France is facing a similar winter to the United Kingdom with energy rationing, shortages predicted, even the Eiffel Tower is being switched off to save power. Uh, just another ramification of the radical green agenda, Ian. What's going on there? Well, these are own goals. Europe's been doing it hard due to its own stupidity. Most of Europe, for some reason, because of its latitude, has very cold winters. And in very cold winters, you need a lot of energy. To grow your food, you need fertiliser. And to do that, you need reliable, stable electricity from coal or nuclear. And for fertilisers, you need gas. Now... In every country in Europe, they have cut back on fossil fuels, they have cut back on making fertilisers, and they are suffering. They are creating an own goal. And here we have a situation in the UK, one of the countries that was very wealthy, and now we have people who are going to die. They cannot eat hot food. They cannot have a hot shower. They cannot heat a room. This is meant to be a civilised part of the world. Europe was meant to be the leader of Western civilization, and they have destroyed themselves for, from within by following a green agenda and by thinking that they're holier than thou, that they can actually beat nature by having sea breezes and sunbeams drive an industrial economy. It is no wonder the major German and French companies are moving elsewhere because they cannot afford the energy... The workforce cannot afford to feed itself and keep itself warm. And if you think Australia's doing it hard, look at Europe. And just very quickly before we go, Ian, you've got, I got 10 seconds. Trump or DeSantis? Well, I'm a great Trump supporter. Um, <laughs> I think he has now given a bit of hope and a bit of joy and a bit of life to politics. He's a man who calls a spade a shovel. I think DeSantis is probably good as a, a governor, but as a leader of the free world, he's got another 10 years before we can think about him. OK, fantastic. Well, I suspected that might be your answer. James, Catherine and Ian, thank you both so much for joining us here on the show this evening.